we are just waking up as Zimbabwe from the sanctions of America, right. which come with regime change principles and expectations from that. Now, when you, when you hear that your neighbor is signing more treaties of bilateral agreements and etc., of course, good for, quote unquote, his province or his country. But when the enemy of NATO moves its military bases into Ukraine, ask me why does Putin start loading up his guns why? and preparing his bombs? I mean, when you hear that the enemy who was three, six, five thousand kilometers away is now stay sitting next door to you, how would you feel? How would you feel if you know that your neighbor next door has got a snake in his back? Right now, Africa, we need to send one political statement across. And I don't even care which president could be listening to this. The policies and the new movement for African youth, we are moving away from the West. We are moving away from Britain. We are moving away from America. We are moving away from that whole thing. We would rather start dealing with new abusers that we have accepted ourselves, rather than the abusers we imposed themselves on us. So the principle we are basically working on is that we no longer need as much American money as we used to because American money is very expensive, very expensive. It comes with a big token in front of cultural transformation, mm -hmm. which we have never expected from the Americans, but they demand it. That part of the reason that they can give you this money, they want one, two, three, four, five, six things done. And you need to pass it in your parliament so that they can come from their countries and do abuse your kids and sleep with your boys and do etc. And you can't do nothing to them. Now, when you get to the Chinese people who are purely interested in the business, yes, it's another form of colonialism. Mm -hmm. I'm not mixing my words. It's another form of colonialism. Right. But it's a better colonialism to a certain extent. Of course, the Chinaman is not coming in telling you to say, stop, stop making children with, with, uh, with, uh, with, with women, uh, start improving on this, start improving on this. So it becomes a bit dangerous. Mm -hmm. So in all honesty, we are, we are not necessarily uh, apologetic to the new paradigm shift where Africa is beginning to look east, is beginning to look Middle East, and looking for new types of money. Because the Americans and the British, their demands on our culture are slightly too preposterous. And they're demanding out of us what we've never demanded from them. The respect is not mutual. And the terms and conditions that are applying are not practical to African culture. Now, how can you come around as a white man and you fail to see that this is one community here that is living in a certain way? So that now you find that there's a border that is separating Zimbabwe and Botswana. There's a border separating Zimbabwe and South Africa. And then they chip over that other end. So we cannot glorify our enemies. And in our midst of our education, we begin to appreciate and fantasize ourselves around colonial borders. And we forget that, number one, what unites us. What unites us is our food, textures, or rhythms, or beats, or cultures, or celebration. Mm -hmm. And to look at all these things that seem to constantly jump across every border. Every time you talk about Tanzania, you forget Tanzania, Tanganyika. These are the Great Lake regions. Tanganyika, as they used to be called, right. which included Waganda, which included Rwanda, which included Kenya, Serengeti, which included Tanzania, which included parts of Congo, which included then in even parts of lower parts of Malawi itself, like Nyasa. And you put all this Great Lake region in one thing. And then you come around, even right now as we're speaking, there's a big war between um, Malawi and Tanzania, Tanganyika, over the great Nyasa, Nyasa Lake where when they were drawing the British, then they took the map, map and they went into Tanzania and then drew the line and etc. And Tanzania is saying, no, 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 the line should, should have been straight. Right. Now here are African leaders now arguing over what a white man agreed on. No, he put the line on the wrong place. So when you cross that line, you are now in my land. But, but who put that line in the first place? Before the line was put, what were we? Our fishermen used to cross over this whole lake from the left and to the right, right. eating, working, playing together. They, they transported or rather exported their enmities to us. The war between the World War I and World War II mm -hmm. and uh, the Cold Wars that we find where Germans are fighting the French, the French are fighting the British, the British and the Italians, the Italians and the Portuguese. The Portuguese and the, you know, and now when they came for the scramble of Africa, and, and then the same enmities of Europe yes. 
were moved to a different geographical location. Mm -hmm. So that if the British and the Portuguese or the British and the French were at war, then you find that the Anglo-Saxons, who is Rhodesia, southern, south and northern Rhodesia, and the Francophones, which now becomes Congo and etc. Mm -hmm. So you cannot deal with this. You'd find that Zimbabwe and, 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 and Zambia and, Zam and Malawi would find it easier to do business with Kenya. Jumping over <laughs> other countries that are pro and would find it easier to do business with Nigeria because here they are French people. So wherever the British were, then there's a, an artificial border which is economic where the Roman Dutch laws and principles mm -hmm. are entrenched, then you'd find that you would link up the Francophones, they would create their own Francophone. The Germans would create their own thing. The Italians would do the same thing. The British would do the same thing. And the Dutch in South Africa would do the same thing. So you, you would say it's a typical, very colonial mindset where you are given a set of enemies to inherit from your colonial masters. So if the British don't like these people, as an African, you must not like them also. We find this very relevant in our modern day, mm -hmm. whether it is Russia, Russian war, American wars, Saddam Hussein wars, and Israeli wars, and, uh, you know, Ukraine wars, and all of Africa, we're all putting flags up, you know, Ukraine this, uh, Russia this, America this, you know, Saddam Hussein this, Syria this, Israeli this, even Africans putting their posters on, oh, Israel, Israel, and you wonder, so where do we buy these allegiances?